Harriet Jacobs, A Life, 2005, is a biography of the escaped slave and writer Harriet Jacobs by American historian Jean Fagan Yellen. In 1861, Jacobs published an autobiography of her experiences as a slave titled Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. Written under the pseudonym Linda Brent for more than a hundred years, historians assumed Incidents was written by white abolitionist Lydia Maria Child. It wasn't until 1987 that Yellen's research revealed Jacobs to be the true author of Incidents, making her one of the earliest documentarians of the impact of slavery on women. In Harriet Jacobs, A Life, Yellen revisits the narrative of Incidents from a historical perspective, while adding context informed by her years of research on Jacobs. Born into slavery in 1813 in Edenton, North Carolina, Harriet was the daughter of Elijah Knox and Delilah Horniblow, who lived apart because they were owned by different people. Until she was six, Harriet lived with Delilah on land belonging to their master, tavern owner John Horniblow. After Delilah's death in 1819, Harriet came under the care of John's wife, Margaret, who taught her how to read, write, and sew. Six years later, Margaret too died. Although her will stipulated that Harriet be left to Margaret's mother, Margaret's brother, Dr. James Norcom, filed a petition stating that Margaret had amended the will so that Harriet would actually be left to her five-year-old niece, Matilda, who was Norcom's daughter. Despite the fact that this supposed amendment was never signed by Margaret, Norcom was nevertheless granted ownership of Harriet. Life with Norcom was hell for Harriet. He repeatedly made sexual advances to Harriet and barred her from getting married, even after she came of age. Despite her ability to marry, Harriet took on the free white lawyer Samuel Sawyer as a lover, giving birth to two of his children. Although Sawyer was a highly respected member of the community who was later elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, his and Harriet's two children, Joseph and Louisa, became Norcom's property by law. Furthermore, Norcom used the children as pawns in his sexual predations of Harriet, threatening to sell them off if Harriet didn't give in to his advances. In 1835, Harriet successfully escaped from Norcom. In order to keep an eye on Joseph and Louisa, Harriet hid for a time in a nearby house. Once she felt assured that her children wouldn't receive harsh retribution for her escape, Harriet hid in a swamp before making her way to the crawl space of a shack belonging to her grandmother, Molly. She stayed in the shack's attic crawl space for seven years. During that time, Sawyer bought Joseph and Louisa from Norcom. He might have wanted to petition for their freedom, but recent laws passed in the wake of the Nat Turner slave rebellion made it increasingly difficult to secure manumission for slaves at the owner's request. The children were sent to live in the very same shack belonging to Molly, but Harriet, fearful of what might happen to her or her children if she was revealed, kept quiet managing only to catch fleeting glimpses of her children during this period. In 1842, Harriet finally escaped to Philadelphia in the North, where slavery had been abolished. In 1845, Harriet made her way to New York where she gained employment as a nursemaid to the wife of the prominent author and poet, Nathaniel Parker Willis. Over the next few years, Harriet became increasingly involved in the abolitionist movements of the Northeast. This became more dangerous, however, following the passage of the 1850 Fugitive Slave Act, which made it much easier for slave owners to reclaim slaves who escaped to the North. In 1852, Harriet had to go back into hiding for a short period after the husband of Matilda, who was technically her legal owner, came to New York on a business trip. Fortunately, the second wife of Nathaniel Willis, still Harriet's employer, made an offer to Matilda's husband of $300 in exchange for Harriet's freedom, which he accepted. A few months later, Harriet came into contact with the author and abolitionist Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wanted to use Harriet's story in her upcoming slave narrative, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Harriet refused, deciding instead to write her life story herself. It would be nearly 10 years before Harriet finished her book and secured a publisher. Written under a pseudonym, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl was written with a white female audience specifically in mind. She hoped to appeal to middle-class morals by painting slavery as an affront to women's chastity. In this way, Yellen states, the book was very consciously a work of social activism, designed to elicit a specific emotional response that might lead to political reforms in the arena of slavery. Even after the end of the Civil War and until her death in 1897, Yellen writes that Harriet continued to advocate for the rights of recently freed slaves.
as well as for women's rights in general. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.